what we're announcing today is a new feature replay that actually allows you to go in and pull in data from a historical period. So that means that on day one, you're starting with not just data from that day forward, but data that you've collected in the past to calculate that SLO. Replay is awesome because it solves one of the biggest challenges we've seen customers have with creating and figuring out the right SLOs. And that's having to wait for data to actually show up. Um, so this is really exciting for us. Uh, we've gotten great feedback from customers so far, and you'll hear what some of them have had to say uh, who've actually already used this feature. Um, but first, I'm be introducing Natalia, who's going to be giving you a demo. When you create an SLO, you usually start by asking yourself about what's important to measure and which service level indicators will help you better understand your service's reliability. And the true value of SLOs stems from monitoring how a service performs over time and using that information to have more informed business conversations. And of course, adjusting these targets as needed. But to do so, you need a decent sample of data. With Replay, you won't need to wait days or weeks for your SLO to collect data. You'll have the possibility to upload up to 30 days of historical data, depending on the data source, and that way you'll be able to get an accurate picture of your SLO performance just minutes after creating it. The user journey with Replay starts from creating a data source that will allow you to pull historical data. Uh, so to do so, let's go to Integrations tab, let's click on Data Source. And for the purpose of today's presentation, I will be creating a data dog, direct connection. Uh, to set up my um, data source, I'll need to provide a couple of additional information. So select API endpoint, then provide API key and then add uh, application key. I will assign replay to my project and I'll give it a nice display name, which is Datadog with replay. You'll see advanced settings and two values that belong to replay. Uh, the maximum period for historical data retrieval is a value that defines how far back in the past your data will be retrieved. For Datadog, the max period is uh, 30 days by default, but you can override that and say that uh, SLOs using this particular data source could go as far as 15 days into the past. Uh, the default period for historical data retrieval is a period that will be used by SLOs connected to this data source. So I'm going to leave the default period for historical data retrieval to seven days. And these values were introduced to safeguard the user experience by protecting against exceeding the data source API limits, uh, as the request for historical data will be counted along with the request to fetch current data. Um, the allowed maximum period for historical data retrieval will differ from source to source, depending on the data source um, retention policies. And as I mentioned for Datadog, it can be anything up to 30 days. Um, then as a last step of creating my data source, I click on add data source. And that's it. My data source is created and I can move on to uh, SLO wizard to start creating SLOs with replay. Now that I have my data source, I can move on to create my SLOs. To do so, I'm going to Service Level Objectives tab and I open SLO Wizard. My first step is assigning my SLO to a service I created before and then select the data source. Here I have my uh, data dog with replay I created seconds ago. And now, as you can see, I have this a uh, new value, which is period for historical data retrieval. Uh, this value is the default period for historical data retrieval that we set on uh, the data source uh, while creating it. I can override this value and provide value in minutes, hours and days. Uh, so let's say that I want to fetch five days of historical data for this particular SLO. 
Uh, and uh, for the purpose of this presentation, I want to use very simple SLO. So say I want 95% of all requests to result in success. So the most appropriate um, metric here will be ratio metric. And I'm pasting query for good metrics, which is uh, requests for, uh, that were successfully received, understood, and accepted. And here I'm pasting uh, query for all the requests that were made. Uh, as a next step, I'm defining a time window. So I want to have a seven day rolling window. And then I can uh, proceed with uh, defining my objective. So let's name this experience as good. Uh, and my target will be 95%. Uh, my query is al already added. And as a last step, uh, I'm adding uh, my SLO name. Oops, should be here. Sorry for that. Um, and that's it. And I click on creating SLO. Uh, my SLO starts uh, gathering historical data. So let's wait a bit for the data to collect uh, with bigger batches of historical data. The process usually takes longer with a week or five days of historical data. We should see uploaded uh, data within a couple of minutes. It's a couple of minutes later and when I open my SLO, I can see that I have five days worth of data. So today is October 19th and I have data from October 14th. What is also important, replay seamlessly connected uh, old and new data, uh, as well as previous and current calculations, so that you won't see any anomalies on your diagrams within SLO. Noble Nine's new replay feature looks like it's really going to be great for our pro productivity. And now we don't have to wait days or weeks for new data to accumulate to see our resulting SLO. Instead, we can quickly look back with existing data and tune our SLOs to meet our needs. Uh, replay is going to be really handy for when we go, oh, we really need an SLO for that particular service or that particular component. Um, and then we can hook it up and we can ingest some historical data and we can actually see, oh, okay, this is a baseline for this particular service. And then we can see, and we can see the incident, what the incident data would have looked like as well around that time. And, and we can set those thresholds and those error budgets um, straight away without having to wait for a couple of weeks to collect data. So, um, you know, I think that that will be really, really handy and, and very powerful and, and a much quicker way to set up um, SLOs and, and get them operating. We call uh, Replay, it pulls historical data from our current monitoring tools to determine if there are actual, determine if there's meaningful data there to um, get uh, the information that we're looking for when we want to create a, a slow for an issue that we have never experienced before. So we have started utilizing that feature to um, see if there is any relevant data for this, uh, for specific use cases or issues that we have come across that we have not experienced before. Um, but now with the new replay uh, functionality, we can actually ingest some historical data, um, say, you know, a um, couple of weeks worth, month worth, whatever the case may be. Um, and, and then we can actually see what that historical information looks like. We don't have to sit there and watch it for the next couple of weeks to, to get a better sense of it. So now with replay, we can see straight away how that service has been performing. And, and that gives us a much better sense of how to set up our error budgets. And so I'm the senior incident problem and service level manager at Flexera Limited. Um, we're a, a software um, as a service provider. I'm Bradford Fultz. I'm the head of uh, platform and reliability engineering at SailPoint. My name is Wayne Major and I work at um, OutSystems and I am a cloud reliability engineer here. Like working with the Noble 9 tool has definitely finally given me a space and a platform to uh, express the things that I care about within the software engineering field. We use SLOs to, met, to monitor everything from our, our batch processing times, you know, meeting our um, objectives for our customers um, to 
you know, RL microservices, um, processing data, you know, and keeping up with what's coming in. Um, our, our API is responding to customer requests for information. Oh, there's no uh, way on earth I could go back to our Grafana dashboard. I mean, it would, it would take me a month just to get a single SLO set up as opposed to five minutes in, in uh, Noble 9. I mean, our teams are looking to increase adoption of SLOs through Noble 9, including deep partnership with our product management team on understanding customer impact of service reliability. Off technical depth versus rolling out new features. Because the more you start adding new features, the more technical depth you add. Uh, rolling out slows with the Noble 9 platform is a very good indicator of uh, when we should stop. Well, I'm not going to say stop. When we should stop focusing on rolling out new features and work on paying down the technical depth that we have and to actually focus on uh, having reliable infrastructure versus rolling out new features to uh, better serve our clients with our platform. So we, we monitor basically every experience we, we can and we're always um, you know thinking about what else we can we can add um, to, to improve you know our visibility um, of how those services are, are providing um, you know experiences to our customers. We have a pretty broad range of services that you know rely on everything from old school SQL based um, you know databases um, that do batch processing through to modern services that you know are using you know um, you know content streaming for example um, and you know are virtually real time. So Noble Nine has fit into our workflows as leaders uh, in a number of ways. Our SRE team specifically has been building SLOs in Noble Nine in partnership with our service teams and then training those teams how to use the tool. Um, so the services teams then incorporate Noble Nine into their weekly tech ops practice, where they review all of their system operations for the last week. And they also set up alerts through Noble Nine's PagerDuty and Slack integrations. Uh, so we encourage teams to have morning coffee dashboards that they look at every morning. And Noble Nine has quickly become a star for them in that lineup. Uh, using error budgets from SLOs has already helped several of our teams reduce alert fatigue from older threshold, threshold style alerts. Noble Nine's tool has actually detected a potential issue with a client's infrastructure um, before our own monitoring actually picked it up. So we actually used Noble Nine recently to help us identify when our mitigation steps had resolved an incident. The error budget burn rate dashboard for that service gave us a very clear indication that we had indeed resolved the issue and restored service for our customers. I hope you're excited as we are to get SLOs in minutes, not months, using Noble Nine with WePlay. If you're already a Noble 9 customer, you can use it right now. It's already in your Noble 9 console, as Natalia showed you. You can see how other customers are already benefiting from the early access they have with WePlay. If you hadn't checked out Noble 9 yet, now's the time to try it. You can sign up at app.noble9.com slash sign up or reach out to hello at noble9.com. We'd be happy to discuss a plan to help you get started. If you're new to SLOs, I recommend checking out slowconf.com where there's amazing educational content from real practitioners in the community. Here's a video to get you started.